Hello, welcome to Layers with Larry. I'm Larry, and these are all my layers. So, so all the specimens we're, we've been talking about here are all creatures that, uh, that don't have a backbone, right? They, uh, they are invertebrates. And the, the uh, Paleozoic, especially the beginning of the Paleozoic, uh, the first couple hundred million years, were really the time of invertebrates. Um, so we're not, if you picture the world at that time, we, we don't have forests on the land, we don't have uh, you know, the creatures of the land that you'd expect to see, they just, they hadn't, they hadn't developed yet. Um, some of the first uh, land creatures that did develop were creatures that came from the sea but lived along the edge and took advantage of those early you know, swampy areas that are caught in between the ocean and between the land and can make that transition. Um, during the Paleozoic, we do see the beginning of fish or fish-like things. In the Devonian that we don't have around here, we really have a well-developed uh, group of creatures that we would recognize as, as fish. Uh, here, here's one here. There's a little model of the guy here. I'll show you a close-up in a minute and the, and the fossil. Um, this is uh, Osteolepus, and Osteolepus was special because uh, he had uh, paired fins, two in the front and two in the back, and there were bones in those fins that aren't like the bones that you find in the fins of modern day fish. In fact, in his arm, that same bone pattern you have, one bone, two bones, and a bunch of little bones that made up the, the end part of the flipper. These were the lobe-finned fishes um, related to things called coelacanths that actually uh, were found in the 1930s to be still alive, although we thought they were extinct for like 80 million years. And these were the creatures that gave rise eventually to the first amphibians. Um, early amphibians eventually gave rise to the reptiles on land. And reptiles gave rise to the reptile or to the mammal-like reptiles and, uh, and eventually aimed to the mammals. So um, strange to think you might be looking at one of your long lost relatives. Uh, some of you maybe remind you more of your relatives than some others, but um, been a long time, a lot of time for stuff to develop. Uh, corals make their appearance in the Paleozoic. All the corals that developed in the Paleozoic are gone. At the end of the Permian, they all became extinct. So all of the corals you're familiar with and that you may have seen out scuba diving out along you know, uh, Florida or places like that, um, had to get sort of reinvented after 250 million years ago. But before that happened, uh, they were, their diversity was, was vast. Uh, some of them were individual little polyps. It said that's the name of the creatures, kind of like a jellyfish. Imagine sitting here and it would gradually grow. Uh, started out as a tiny little guy and then he grew and his little tentacles would be hanging out here and laying on the ocean bottom. That's a solitary horn coral, as it's called. Other corals you'll find, especially in the Bighorn Mountains. Here's a couple of interesting specimens. We'll show you a close up. But this is Halicytes or the chain coral. In a colonial coral, so lots of little individual animals are all living together. Here's another type of one, um, another type of one called a tabulate coral. They're all extinct now today. Um, here's a couple of pictures of some really big coral heads that, um, that were found up in that area as well. Now, one group that uh, we haven't talked about today, uh, but we have talked about in previous videos in later times about ammonites uh, and nautiloids. These are the cephalopods. If you remember the squid-like or uh, um, octopus-like creatures that lived in a shell and they had the gas-filled chambers and they'd use that for controlling their, their buoyancy in the water and jet propulsion system of water to, to move themselves along. Well, uh, those creatures had their origins in the Paleozoic and the time we're talking about right now. The very beginnings of the Cambrian, but most obviously in the in the Ordovician and especially a little bit later into the, the Mississippian. Um, here's a good example of one. So here's a cephalopod, it's called endoceros. Um, so these guys are straight, they don't coil. The first cephalopods were like that, they were all straight. Um, here, here's a neat picture showing one of these things that got to be over 20 feet long. And running down the middle of them, which we can see in this specimen here, which has been polished, you can see here again the chambers, which are now filled with minerals, or calcite in this case. But you see these little lines, that's part of that structure that runs down the middle of the shell, and it controls the amount of gas and liquid that's in the chamber so that they can control their, their buoyancy called the, the uh, siphuncle. Uh, to give you an idea how big some of these got, these are from the Bighorn Dolostone, uh, from the Bighorn Mountains. These are just sections of the siphuncle. So imagine 
how big, and they got much bigger than this, but these ran down the middle of one of these guys' shells and transmitted the, the, ox, or the uh, gases and the, and the liquid to the chambers to control their, their buoyancy in the water. And this weird thing, if you notice it sitting here, um, it's, it's kind of bizarre, and it's worth mentioning a, a brief thing about it. For, this is called restepticulitis. I'll show you here a picture of a whole complete one, but this is not a whole complete one. This one's about that much of one. So it would have made a kind of a round shape like this, and it would have had that pattern all around it. And from the edge, it has these little column-like structures. And scientists for the longest time did, couldn't figure out what the heck these things were. Uh, we now know that they are or were um, uh, calcareous algae. So algae being a plant, you know, lived in the ocean, laid on this, the, these nice calm ocean bottoms, kind of like a stromatolite, but, um, but not a stromatolite uh, because stromatolite is bacteria. These are actually complex uh, plant cells and they would secrete calcium carbonate or lime to make their rigid sort of structure in which they lived. And they're just beautiful and bizarre things. So um, that's why I brought that here for you to take a look at today. Now, later in the Paleozoic, when we start getting into the Devonian time, uh, some of these straight cephalopods did have a habit of starting to coil up. So some of you might see this, it's been carefully polished so it looks really pretty, but you know, it wouldn't look that nice when you found it in the ground. But you can see clearly um, where those gas-filled chambers were, now filled with calcite, and this would have been the living chamber where the animal's body was. That's not an ammonite. That didn't exist yet when this thing lived. Um, we could call it an ammonoid, which literally means an uh, um, ammonite-like thing. Uh, it's kind of a creature, um, this guy ev evolved from the same creatures that the, uh, the ammonites evolved from, but these went in a different way. Um, they, they, uh, uh, they were like the precursors of the beginnings of ammonites, but we didn't call them ammonites yet. That didn't happen until uh, much later into the very late Paleozoic, which we're not talking about in this video, and then on through the Mesozoic, the Cretaceous and the Jurassic uh, was the age of the, the ammonites. And like... Uh, uh, like our corals that all became extinct at the end of the uh, Paleozoic, um, all of the, the ammonites became extinct at the end of the, the Cretaceous period, as, as you might remember from the previous video. That's a beautiful specimen. It's called a Ganiatite. Weird name. So uh, to sum up, in this video we've talked then about um, the period of the late Cambrian and the, the beginning of the Paleozoic, a time period of about 500 and uh, 510 million years ago to about 330 million years ago. It's a lot of time. Uh, a lot of time for things to stay pretty much the way they were. Uh, these nice, calm, warm, shallow oceans, which are nicely preserved for us over here in Shoshone Canyon. Uh, when you go take a hike up there or drive through the canyon, especially when you take a hike up in the damn road, uh, instead of just looking at the river or looking at the road in front of you, look along the sides because there's chunks of the rock and limestone all over the place and they're full of fossils. You, know, you can't collect up there because that's part of the Bureau of Land Reclamation and, and that's not allowed there, but you can certainly collect them in the form of pictures and, and share them with your, with your friends. Um, so do that sometime. Uh, you know, they're invertebrates. So uh, if you go someplace on public land that's not part of the, the Bureau of Land Reclamation, like up on Bighorn Mountain, uh, and that Hunt Mountain Road I mentioned drives right through um, Bighorn Dullestone and Madison Limestone. And you can see these huge coral heads just sitting in the rock. I mean, they're part of the mountain. You can't collect them, but they make great pictures. Um, go check it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Paleozoic. Early, early interesting life, some of which made it through, most of which didn't, but set the, set the groundwork for what came later. Like a little friend here.